Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons. We've done quite a bit since the last episode, actually, so let's get you up to speed. First of all, I have replaced all my furnaces with nether furnaces because all of our nether dust finally finished processing, and I realized the quest book specifically says, let's see if I can find it, um, it says that they are extremely efficient cooking machines. Um, and then it says very handy for someone needing a lot of stuff furnished in a jiffy, which to me implies that they are faster. They are not. They are not faster. Uh, they're the exact same speed as regular furnaces. However, they, uh, the fuel burns half as slow. So you essentially get double the fuel in them and that's why they're nice. Um, so I just decided to make a bank of them anyway and we got 12 because that's a nice little square. And I also set up a chest with these 10 item pipes and I put a conveyor on that item pipe there. Let me remove a couple of these so you can see what's going on here. Um, so that is a conveyor set to extract with a screwdriver on it. And so it will pull planks out of here and put them into the furnaces. And since they are twice as efficient, those planks will actually smelt um, you know, planks normally smelt one and a half items each, so now they smelt three items each. So three, or one stack of planks will smelt three stacks of stuff. So this will all last me a while. I'm trying to get rid of this fir wood though, so let's switch that out. Um, the fir wood is the stuff I got manually from that snowy forest. And I also moved the anvil over here, and I have moved everything over there. Look at this. No more storage over here except for the steel stuff. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I have added a few more of the chests here. I added another barrel. I shifted things around slightly. This is for um, uh, glass and bricks is kind of what that one is. This is still all the nether stuff. This is now kind of my blocks that don't fit in barrels box, but now it's there. Uh, I haven't decided what that is yet. This is some ores, some dusts, and gems. Uh, I put all of my other ores and dust over here for now until we get ore processing figured out a bit better. I did a lot of mining. Uh, we have mined Cassiterite sand. I found an emerald vein or beryllium vein, which has emeralds in it, which is nice for later. Those are pretty rare in the nether, so a weight of only 30. Um, the rarest one, we also found an Electrotine vein. I don't remember if that was something I showed you or not, but the rarest one of all we have still, and I even have found two manganese veins, which is nice, uh, cause we'll need, the, uh, some of that stuff for later, but I haven't found one of these. Molybdenum veins are very rare. They have a weight of only five compared to all these other ones. So if I think that I assume, I mean, this is a total assumption, but it's generally how these things work. If you add all these numbers up of different things that can spawn, when the game is deciding what ore to spawn in a chunk, it'll add these all up and I don't know, what do these add up to? Probably like 500 something, maybe 600 something. And then it rolls a dice, you know, with that many sides and it would have to come up one through five to actually pick molybdenum or something like that. I don't know exactly how it works, but it's it's very rare is the main point. But yeah, so we have a lot of stuff now. I got some more coal. We got tin. We got sulfur. Uh, I got some more nether quartz. I've got a lot of iron in here. I got saltpeter. That was another one we found in the nether. Uh, sphalerite is more zinc, tetrahedrite for more copper. I've also got chalcopyrite and malachite for more copper. And then, yeah, there's not a ton more iron in here, I guess. Is there more iron in here? Maybe not. A little bit. So I might not have as much iron as I thought I did. Maybe I didn't go iron mining. I swear I had. There's some pyrite, but that seems to be it. And that one yellow limonite. Oh well, we can get more pretty easily. The important part, oh maybe it's in here. No, that's sulfur. I guess there's some brown limonite. Let's get all this smelted up. Um, I don't think we have a reason to process it more. And you'll notice I made some more tumbaga. And we'll talk about why in a moment. 
to get all these placed in. I thought about rearranging all this so that I could also have item pipes going into the top, um, but they would have to be arranged in a flat layer, maybe facing each other, and then I could have item pipes along the top of all of them, and then the item pipes going along the back on the sides for fueling them and item pipes coming out the bottom. So then I could only put stuff in the top and grab it out the bottom and put fuel in the middle once in a while. That would be nice, um, maybe someday. Okay, what else have we done? Uh, I moved more storage stuff over here. So this is wood and paper. This is saplings and flowers. This is random building crap. I should put my trophy somewhere. This is more like chisely building crap. This is still bees and books. And I just put my bee loot bags in there. Oh, these gardens should now go in here. There we go. And then this is crop stuff. You can see I made a lot of crop sticks. Those are really easy now that we have the lathe plus the assembler. So I made a bunch of that. Uh, I've also made a decent amount of iron and steel rods and stuff just because we needed them. And yeah, I finished out the farm. So as you can see, that is all done and it's down one square below. So now I can put dirt on top of this layer and plant more stuff and this will still collect it. And it's actually full right now. And you'll also notice, what's this? I attached water to it. I was curious how much hydration does and I found a calculator online um, and it actually does quite a bit of a boost. It's like a 20 to 30% boost in most cases to hydrate. And I also made one of these sterling water pumps. I don't know if you remember, but there was a quest for that back in the steam age. It's not very expensive. You just need uh, iron plates and steel stuff and then these glass tubes. So as long as you have steel and the alloy smelter, you can you can make this. And it produces a lot of water, right? 150 liters a second is seven and a half per tick which is equivalent to, for me, seven and a half of those Railcraft water tanks. The problem is you need to fuel it. So it's not really that great unless you have an easy source of fuel nearby. And I was just using it to kind of see how hydration helped. I figured I might as well just hook it up to my main water pipeline, which we then did. Uh, let me go ahead and disconnect that so it doesn't bother me. There we go. What else did I do? Um, I, I think that was all connected. And then I dug out another pathway to exit the base. And then I made uh, these special doors, which come from the door maker thingy. I was looking through the building better bases quest line. And there's this thing, the door factory. So I built a door fact. What is the block mixer? Maybe you can find a use for this. It's kind of weird and doesn't work right. I was going to throw it out anyway. I don't know if that's like sarcasm or seriousness on the part of the mod writer, but all this to say, you can like pick what kind of movement it does. It auto closes, which is super nice. There's how long it takes to open. It can require redstone or not. You can set what sound it makes. Uh, and these are the materials that it like makes the, the look out of. You can even put a code on it. So that's all pretty cool. My saw bench is down there. But what I was sad about is you can't make a triple door. I was assuming I was going to be able to make a triple door out of it because we've got this, you know, we're doing odd numbers. So that being said, the only other thing I can think to try would be these garage doors, um, which require iron rings and those carpenter blocks. So let me make a few steel screws real quick, and I'm gonna try that and just see if it uh, does anything for me. Looks like I already have some steel screws. I'll make a few more. They are cheaper now that I have the lathe. I can, let's see, what do I need to do? We need a file. Oh no, I don't, I don't use files anymore to make rods. I should just have some rods. Yeah, there we go. And then I saw into bolts, and then I just lathe the bolts. Oh, that's so nice. Half price screws, baby. Okay, so we do that and then, weren't those frame box things just like, yeah, a bunch of sticks. Bunch of sticks. Oh yeah, there's also assembler stuff that we need to talk about. So, three, four, five, six, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, there we go. 
24 seems like a good number. And then I need iron rings, which I don't think I have a great way to make. Uh, I have iron rods in here. I know I made a bunch. Here we go. So iron rings. Oh God, 73 things. Just kidding. We're not going to look through that menu. We're just going to do this. I think someone said it makes like three fourths of a circle. So that's kind of helpful to remember. Because you're like hammer is top left and it goes that way. Files bottom left and it goes that way. Ring is bottom right. So maybe that helps somebody a little bit. Someone said that in a YouTube comment and I thought oh, that's kind of clever. All right, so then I do this. Now I have 10 of these and I have no idea how they work. But it said it needs garage door requires a block at the top to hang down from, but can pretty much be any length. A redstone signal on any block next to the garage door blocks will open or close the door and it will propagate across multiple vertical doors. So I think I need to make a few buttons. Carpenters pressure plates, maybe. Those are a pain in the butt. They need long springs. Um, let me just make a few buttons. Oh gosh. I guess we're screwed no matter what. Okay, wood screws I have up here still. Um, and then I need iron springs, which can be done in a bending machine. Oh. But I need long rods. Is that even better than if I just... No, it's not. Because isn't that how you make the spring is just a long rod? No, it's two long rods. Okay, it's half the price then. I guess that's worth doing. Um, but long rods... I need to just handcraft. And I think those are the same price either way, right? Fluid solidifier. 144 iron is one iron ingots worth or I can make two rods. Yeah, never mind. They're, they're the same price. Uh, and then we wire mill, no, bending machine on what channel? Channel one. Make some iron springs here. I've also made a decent amount of just uh, machine part stuff like pumps and motors and stuff. But yeah, one, a couple of recipes I discovered in the assembling machine were uh, chests, you know, just regular old chests, way cheaper. It's just two logs and two planks. Boom. So that's really nice. And then another thing that was way cheaper was, oh shoot, what was it? Um, there was another thing I made a bunch of because I realized how much cheaper it was in there. Uh, maybe it was the crop sticks I'm thinking of. Uh, and then in addition to all of that, are pistons cheaper, by the way? Just random thought. Not really. They're, they're maybe a little easier. Yeah, they're a little cheaper because you only need... Um, well, I guess you use these instead. Is that better? Eh, maybe it's slightly better. I don't know. But you only need one gear, which is nice. And you don't need to deal with the carpenter's blocks. Either way, we have bought pistons, so I still have a lot. Uh, but yeah, the one thing I made that we haven't talked about yet, it, I guess there's two things. Uh, I was looking into the iron chests, and it turns out it's way cheaper to make them in the assembler, first of all. So double gold plates, only three of them rather than four of them, and you don't need the screws and the tools. So definitely recommend making them in the assembler, but what's even better than that is the upgrades are even cheaper. So if I want a gold chest, I really should start with iron chests and there's an iron to gold upgrade. And that only requires two gold plates to make because I can just do a double gold plate. And once I'm at MV, I can make those directly, but for now I have to hammer them together and then we can get gold chests, which store a lot more. 
And we can skip steel entirely by doing that. There is a steel to gold upgrade, but there's really no reason because I can just go straight from iron to gold. And then later, once we have the cutting machine, we can do uh, diamond chests and they only require two diamond plates. And then there's still a gold plate involved, so that totals out to three gold plates. Um, but I think that's still cheaper. I guess it depends. Do I want to spend three gold and two diamond or just four diamond? The problem with these uh, is the upgrades to diamond require MV and the upgrade to gold requires MV. So I can't make them in the assembler yet, which is why you're not seeing gold chests everywhere. Otherwise, I already would have. And then there's one more thing after I make this that we still haven't talked about. Do, 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 do. Okay, and I believe they said these are only triggered by players. Pressure plates are player only activation. So that's really nice. Um, so yeah, let's go try out these doors and see what they do. Oh, oh. Ooh. Okay. I mean, there's a slight sadness that there's not uh, an animation, but what I can get with that, like, full on door size thing going on. I can just get in and out real easy. I guess we should have it uh, on this side, like that. Sweet. So now I can get in and out without having to do anything. Mobs can't get in. I like it. Okay, so if you want non-standard size doors, those garage doors might be the way to go. I wonder if you can chisel them. It would be cool if you could give them different looks, but yeah, they're not carpenterable or anything. There might be ways to give them different looks, I'm not sure. Okay, the water pump will go in this chest. I tried making auto workbenches, by the way. They do work for free, but they are slow. It's like 10 seconds for one craft. Uh, and they just require a work table and some motors and casings. So yeah, they're kind of a pain in the butt. Looks like they're cheaper in the assembler. Um, so I would only use this if you really need some sort of automation and it doesn't matter if it's fast. But the last thing we haven't talked about are these overflow valves. And these were also shown in the image, I think. No, I guess they're right here. So I think we read this in one of the uh, episodes, but essentially you put it somewhere and it allows flow through it. I think it'll output until it reaches a certain number and then it'll start voiding. And another awesome thing is that the reward we get is four of these tanks, which is a pretty big reward because that's four pumps that we don't have to deal with. Uh, the recipe for them is a little weird. It's pumps and motors, so that's fine. Plus Tumbaga plates, eh, a little more expensive because that's mostly gold. And then one of these programmed bio circuits and you need a screwdriver plus one that's on configuration zero. And that's, I needed to make a vacuum tube to make this because it's like a, a different kind of circuit, but it doesn't consume it when you craft them. So you do only need to make one. I thought you needed one each until I crafted it. Uh, but here I could have read, it says NC, which stands for not consumed. And it says right there, does not get consumed in the process, but I didn't read that. So there you go. Those are the updates. Um, so now on this guy, I put an overflow valve and you can set the overflow point. And so we can just empty out the creosote whenever we want. Feels good, man. 
feels really good. And yeah, now we can continue progressing. What is this? Oh, now I got that quest done. Sweet. So what do we do next? I have a lot of things. Let's look through the to-do list, though. And put away the chisel. Our to-do list is uh, not updated recently. So we've moved the storage. Done. I have gotten the lathe. Those are not possible. I checked all the different veins that exist in the nether. There's no tin or gold. I've mined some copper. I would still like to make a sifter. We have solved boiler fuel, but I can't quite check that off the list because we haven't connected it fully yet. Um, LV wrench. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was wanting to make uh, one of the powered wrenches to see how much longer it would last, just for fun. A rock breaker is nice because it gets you infinite obsidian and the crop sensor we want, but that's not till MV. Cross that off the list. And to solve boiler fuel, we will need to move this stuff upstairs all the way up to here. And I'm trying to decide how important that is right now. Because if I keep these full with planks, they run for a long time. I put the work table here so we can make the planks really easy. How much steam? So these move 240 per tick. Is that right? And I'm already making 80 per tick. Um, I don't know. For now, I might leave it. That's a lot of 10 item pipes. I have to get up there. Oh, but that's not that bad. It's just small 10 item pipes. Why am I so scared? Let's do it. We'll make the LV wrench first, though. Because we're going to need to do a lot of wrenching. So we're talking about this kind of wrench. Oh, never mind. I can't do that. I need batteries first. Jokes. Uh, how far are we from batteries? Uh, 32 antimony ingots. Or 32 lead ingots. So maybe it's time for the Twilight Forest. Question mark, question mark. Uh, where's my novice thaumaturgy? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I need four circuits and a diamond. That's it. Four circuits, diamond, we pop those in here. And that'll get me the quick and dirty portal generator. Let me put away these fluid tanks, fluid pipes. Ooh, a loot bag. What do we got? A beet burger and redstone torches. I'll take that. Where do torches go? I guess they go in the tool category. Tumbaga goes in generic. Steel screws go in here. This is my wrench. I don't need the saw with me. Wood screws go back. Oh yeah, and I, I when I was doing nether stuff, I was eight. Oh, where does that go? Hmm, I think that'll go with the pumps and stuff. Um, I was able to upgrade my bolts again. So now they're level two quartz. And I was up able to upgrade the crossbow again. In fact, I might have upgraded it twice since y'all have seen it last. I did put a diamond on it because I was so tired of its low durability. When it's made out of wood, its durability is crap. And I was fixing it all the time. And so I quote unquote wasted a modifier on diamond, but it was not wasting. But look how fast this thing shoots now with three... It's got three levels of redstone. So, that's pretty great. And the alumite bolts have enough bolts that I haven't really had to worry about running out, because even though I might use, you know, 30 or 50 in a shorter period of time, by the time I need them again, they've recharged. So that's pretty great. I've got my hammer. Let's grab our mining gear. I might even grab a hunter's backpack. 
And I kept one leather tunic because I want to make this composite vest. Maybe I should make this now, actually. It's not hard. Um, I just need to make some mixed metal ingots, which as far as I can tell, don't really care. So iron, bronze, and tin is probably my easiest route. Iron, bronze, and tin plates. That's stone plates. And how many did I need? I needed six. Okay. So six of those. Easy peasy. The sad part is I'm like looking at this and it's like we could have done this since the moment I had steel because the only thing this needs, I guess you need the compressor as well. I don't remember which came first, but you can make all sorts of stuff and eh, maybe not that. Well, I don't have tungsten steel or IV circuits, so we're not going to worry about that. Steel chest plate is just eight ingots or eight plates, no matter how you cut it. So that's pretty easy. And then we grab those guys. We grab this. Grab that leather tunic. Where did I leave you? And there we go. Composite vest, which, boom, look at all that protection. So much protection. I'll just throw away the iron chest plate. One of the burgers. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, where do I put the portal? I think, I think having it kind of outside is probably what I should have done with the other one. So I'm gonna mine a little bit into here and then we'll put the portal right here and I want to say it's gonna need one more square because it's a two by two that has flowers all around it we'll need dirt around here of course my diggers backpack is always obnoxious when you don't want it to be We'll just source the water locally. Love me some locally sourced water. fill up my stack of torches 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 okay now I've seen some other uh, GT and H content, but not enough to really know what to expect in the Twilight Forest. So you can expect uh, the unexpected. When Crydax does things he's never done before. Should be fun. I think we just chuck that in there, right? Yep. And get struck by lightning. Oh no. That break it doesn't seem like it broke it but I have to fix that that's gonna bother me it's gonna bother me okay well Geronimo Oh, 
right. Here we are in the middle of what seems to be blindness. And a snowstorm. Wow, there's a lot going on right here. You gonna attack me? Oh, huh, you're gonna attack me. Okay. That little kobold gave me treasure. Notes on a stronghold. What is that? I should read that. The tendrils of darkness surrounding this area are just a manifestation of a protective spell over this entire dark forest. This spell causes blindness, which is quite vexing. I've seen several interesting things and would like to keep exploring. I have found ruins in the dark forest. There's a stronghold inhabited by... I assume that says knights. Oh, full of goblins. They wear knightly armor, but their behavior is most unknightly. Deep in the ruins, I found a pedestal. It seems to... Seems to... Uh, something, a type... What's that say? Seems to be of a type that knights would place trophies on to prove their strength. Killing a powerful creature would seem to weaken the curse, and placing a trophy associated with the creature on the pedestal would likely grant access into the main part of the stronghold. The only creature I've seen so far... So it's basically saying I need to get a trophy of the Hydra thing in the Fire Swamp. Cool. Okay, well, we're in the Twilight Forest. Neat. There are snowstorms in the Twilight Forest, which cause slowness, it seems. So let's maybe stay out of the snowstorm for now. Oh, but what's this? We must explore a monster spawner of druids. There's a skeleton druid right here. Wonderful. And I'm blind again. Okay. But he dropped a sticky piston. Plus, bricks! Y'all gave me so much crap for not having found a, uh, one of the brick houses way back in the day. To get my bricks from. Oh, come on, I'm busy. Must you? Wow, they drop a lot of stuff, though. Torchberries, we didn't have those. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna try to get out of this snowstorm. It's very annoying. What is this kind of thing? A canopy tree wood. All right, cut you down. Get some new saplings. Canopy tree sapling. Does it do anything special? It doesn't look like it. Unless there's some sort of... No. It's just regular wood. Okay. Potion of strength, water breathing, swiftness, night vision. Um, definitely don't need a lily pad or wheat. We'll keep the dropper. Notes on an icy cave. Oh, this is no ordinary snowfall. It's a magical phenomenon. Where the leaves turn red and the grass ties, there is a wooden tower. The antennae on the tower boost the power of the curse. Powerful creature. Stop the creature and the blizzard will fade. Okay, this all sounds very classic fantasy-esque. I want to go this way. Maybe there's less blizzard. This is annoying. So is this a uh, pick blindness or slowness type situation? I was imagining there would be a normal part of the forest. Why do I... I feel like I've watched someone go into the Twilight Forest and it was not like this. 
Am I just unlucky? Is that a cow? What is that? A boar. Wild boar. Probably get a quest if I kill enough of you, so... Sorry, dude. Winter wolf. Okay. Surely there's an option between these two, right? It looks like down there. There might be another biome. I don't want to be blind or slow. Is that a yeti? That is a yeti. I'm actually scared of that. Okay, I one shot killed it. Maybe I shouldn't have been scared of that. So, is this just like bad luck with biome spawns? I'm gonna try going down there. There might be a normal biome for me to explore if I actually try. Uh, I really need to pay attention to my hunger as well. What is that? A bighorn sheep. Yeah, because this darkness is also not fun. You can't see crap. I can sprint blindly through it, though, and hope there's not any bad mobs. This is a bad idea. I'll stick with the snow. Oh, uh, I also very much need to put a waypoint. Portal home. Save. Okay, so we'll stick with snow for now. As our annoying thing of choice. What are they dropping? Dude, come on, really? Good thing I have piston boots. I can go a little faster if I do this, can't I? Oh, thank God, there is normalness. Okay, this is what this is more what I expected to find. Fireflies, huh? Firefly jar. Stuck in the twilight forest. Low on sticks? What? Sticks. You'll find canopy trees. This big tree generates a lot of logs for your coke ovens and some roots when planted. Oh, interesting. To sinfully get above a ceiling, you really shouldn't. Oh. Huh. So it'll punch through ceilings? Is what that's telling me. Oh. I take I take the jar. Mush gloom. It's like a mushroom, but a gloom. It doesn't even have any crafting recipes. Chucking it. Birds. Oh, they're cute. What's this? Pumpkins? Regular pumpkins, a random um, pile of stone that seems to be pointless. Okay. A big tree with singing cicadas. Wow, they sound like cicadas. Poor little bunny that is uh, no longer. There's sand, there's water, there's another big tree. Okay. Well. I mean, we're really here for the ores, so. Let's do some prospecting.
Well, that was easy. <laughs> um, we already found him a lived in vein, which is the one thing we didn't have in uh, in the nether. That's really funny. So let's see with molybdenum, molybdenum, or so with these veins, wolfenite, molybdenum, molybdenum. Well, I, I think so. Wolfenite is the one we want more of because we can make steel out of it or steel. That's not what I meant to say. Uh, lead, because we can get the dust and then we can centrifuge it. And we get six to one lead. It's not a good source of lead by any means. Don't. That's not what I'm saying. Sometimes I feel like people take everything I say as this like final statement with no nuance. Like, oh, he said he said wolf or he said wolfenite's a source of lead. That means he must not know that there are other sources of lead in the game that are better. No, that's not what's happening. Come on, guys. I do have a brain, believe it or not, even if it doesn't seem like it all the time. So yes, I am aware there are better sources of lead, but this is a source of lead if I need it. But yeah, I don't really need any of this stuff right now, so I'll just leave that there. We'll look at a different chunk. Ooh, what's this? Different kind of wood? Okay, gotta fill in some water here. All right, what do we think is gonna be in this one? Take your bets now. I think it's gonna be something else we've never seen before. Nope. I was oh so wrong about that. Just good old iron. Uh, turn on ore chunks. Okay. So let's see. We can do a couple more around here. We'll do north. I might fast forward this next bit. When do I get a actual? Hold on. Prospect. Uh. When do I get some form of prospecting? with a prospector once you get them. Well, that's not helpful. So let's see. What does that one say about prospecting? The scanner and the seismic prospector. Uh oh. not scary um okay back to this what's that scanning basic scanner we already know about that that's what we need for crops bro trying to read here one of the fast ones too really fast why don't i jump up on a tree where you can't get me Oh yeah, he's one of the ones where like it keeps missing too. It's very annoying. Okay, please everyone stop bothering me. Um Okay, so what is the prospector they're talking about? Analyzing the soil? This is what we want. A seismic prospector will tell you the ores in the surrounding chunks in a sort of handy book you can read and also the underground fluids beneath you. It doesn't need to be powered. To determine what kind of fluid there is in the chunk, you need to scan the soil by right clicking an advanced seismic prospector with two powder barrels for whatever that is, or 16 TNT. This one doesn't explode the user too on use. Make sure you wait a few seconds after placing it before applying the explosives. 
blah, blah, blah. Use a single data stake to extract the data. Each one will hold one result. Next, you need to put it in a GT scanner. Then you put the analyzed data stake in the bottom right slot of a printer and add three paper. Oh my God, to the top left slot. And you freaking have to make sure Mars is in retrograde. Oh my goodness. Take the printed pages and combine it with a piece of leather. Wow. Ta-da, now you have a book with detailed info about the chunks you scanned. Visual prospecting adds the information to your map the moment you make the book. Data sticks are not easy or possible to make right now, so do not lose them. Oh. Oh, yeah, they're not. Um, interesting. Okay. So how, it gives you 64 powder barrels, so that's enough to scan a decent amount of chunks. How expensive is this? I mean, that's not bad. It's just two sensors. So that's a total of four circuits. So I can make this. And it doesn't need power, which is nice. Maybe I will make that. The, the fact that it comes with powder barrels is nice. And these actually aren't that expensive. I need two each. How expensive is TNT? And what is ITNT? Industrial TNT? So you can make ITNT with uh, stuff we're not going to do. You can make regular TNT with sulfuric acid and gelled toluene. Oh God, no, we're not doing that. Um, this is much better. It's just gunpowder and gunpowder is what? Coal, sulfur, saltpeter. I can make all that. Is there a cheaper recipe? No, it's always one to one. Oh yeah, and I can just do fuse wood. I forgot about that. We can extract a bunch of fuse wood if we have that. Okay, okay, that's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's mostly, it's half coal dust, a tiny bit of sulfur, and saltpeter, which I have a ton of. And saltpeter is a very high productivity, so we basically have infinite saltpeter. Because we have nether saltpeter. So one stack of nether saltpeter is 16 stacks of saltpeter dust. So yeah, saltpeter is basically free, and sulfur is, uh, let's see, is sulfur a four? No, okay, but I have nether sulfur, which is one to four. Either way. Uh, but it also needed me to make what? A printer? What the heck is a printer? And a scanner. And the scanner does need power. Oh gosh, there's a lot here. Okay, there's the printer. Use ink sacks to get squid ink, then move it using pipes or cells. I mean, it's a process. Is it a process I care to do? Or should I just do the old, the old faithful, which is this? Not really sure. Roots, they're deep underground. What do we got, Glauconite? I don't know what the heck that is. Okay. That's confusing. Um... Can chunks have no ore? That seems to be the case. Weird. Didn't expect that. I guess if it tries to spawn and it's too, too low, then it doesn't spawn anything. Because the ground is really low here. The ground is only at like 32. 
So that's part of the weirdness. What do we got here? Sapphire. Ooh. Sapphire. High rope, almondine, sapphire, and green sapphire. Okay. What do we get with that? Vein stats. So we got almondine, which is a. Uh, I'm surprised you can't sift that one. This almondine dust. Iron, alumina, and silicon dioxide. Okay. So almondine, pie rope, which you can mill. What can you do with pie rope dust? Magnesia. Interesting. Uh, okay, magnesia. And then what else was there? Sapphire. I assume that's, yep, sapphire gems, which we will need for blue lenses. Uh, so that's probably worth getting a few of. And then green sapphire, which is, we already have emeralds. So I think in most cases they're gonna be interchangeable, but let's get a little bit of this stuff here. Why not? I like all the colors. I gotta say, it's nice to not be mining in the nether where you have to worry about lava popping up every single place that you mine. It's so annoying. Also, another really annoying thing about uh, mining in the nether is the um, the emerald veins. I guess it's more an annoyance about the emerald veins in specific. The emerald itself doesn't mine with the, like when you hit the hammer on a rock block next to it, it doesn't mine the emerald. So you have to like mine them separately, which is really a pain in the butt. found something fancy terra infused stone what does that get us earth shards and terra crystal powder so we got some thom crafty got some thom crafty stuff oh yeah i probably should look at the quest uh, that we opened up here. I'll take a magic loot bag. Okay, so what does this open up? Magic feathers. You'll need a map. It's a magical place, so why not a magical map? Go find some raven feathers. Okay. So a magic map focus. They want me to get iron wood. Okay, we needed to collect some of those roots. You can make unique armor. Is the armor any good? Ironwood, protection, feather falling, aqua affinity. Protection five, protection seven. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. Its durability is pretty low though. Um, oh, we are getting those little crystals. Okay. Interesting. 
Oh, this is some sort of thalmcraft vein, along with amber and cinnabar ore. There's one of those roots. Okay, we are back. At long last, we found a cryolite vein. Look at this. Look at this. We had to search this many to find a cryolite. And look at all this sapphire! I don't know if I'm cursed or if the twilight forest is cursed, but I found so many sapphire veins. It's ridiculous. And I found diamond veins, another terra and air vein. Um, I don't know if I mentioned the soapstone. So we've got a good amount of the different options. I was looking through what are the different uh, ones that can spawn. And we found diamond. I don't care about lapis because we have that at home. We found molybdenum, olivine, terra, and air. Coal veins we have at home. Sapphire vein we found a billion of. We now find cryolite. I haven't found a real nickel vein, so that will still be necessary. I found soapstone. I need one of these, the Perdito and Ordo. Gold vein, I don't really care about. I would like the gold, though. I still don't have a good way to get gold. Um, so, but it's harder to find because look at the height. It's 30 to 60. And so because it's 30 to 60, we don't get, um, you know, a lot of those spawn in the air and don't end up existing. I found plenty of iron. Appetite, I have that at home. Magnetite, also at home. Salts, that's, we're never going to see that because it spawns too high. Hesiderite, same thing. And we still haven't found that. So it's really the two Thomcraft uh, magic veins that we haven't found, as well as a real nickel vein. But now we've got Galena, Cryolite, and this will be silver. Now uh, my miner's backpack's already full. So I'm going to go home. And we're gonna refresh our backpacks and put everything away, and then we will come back and mine some silver and lead. Now, home is all the way up there, and we have to annoyingly walk through the dark at that ending point. Okay, I believe we are ready to go back to the nether and get some silver and lead and you know at this point i don't even know like how important are silver and lead i guess i don't have a source of lithium so we might be using lead or no we need lead for battery alloy how does it work again oh well first of all one of this vein that we just found is a quest um also wants us to get a nickel one which will help us make the electric blast furnace uh, that's not important. Most of these are not that crazy. The magic map might be nice. And I probably will want night metal. Is that any good? I have no idea. Uh, let's see. Handle modify. Ooh, yeah, that is pretty good. The mining level is not great, but the durability is dope. That's not a bad idea. Ardite and cobalt mining. Oh, you can just make an ironwood pick. Interesting. And it has a mining level of seven. Okay, well, back to the vein. Okay, so that's the top. One, two, three, four. Yeah, this is, I'll probably start here. And I can just mine up. No, that's actually one too tall. 
can go one further down. That way we're getting a little bit of everything because I want the silver. Why do I want the silver? I don't remember exactly. I know we can make the the solar boilers with it. Is that really it? Surely silver's good for other things too. Maybe I'm just being wishful. Maybe it's just the lead that we really need from this. Can silver do more for us? Let's see, silver. Speaking of which, how do I get more gold? Silver and gold tend to go together, but I'm not sure. There are some things solarium dust can be electrolyzed. Now, solarium is not soul sand, so never mind. Um, how else do you get gold? Magnetite. Oh, I guess magnetite has a, a chance and a, a really good chance once we can give it a mercury chemical bath. Okay. And an electromagnetic separator is a thing too. Okay, that's probably the main way to make gold then. And basaltic mineral sand also gets us that. Okay, how do I make the electromagnetic separator? Electromagnetic uh, separator. Oh, I can already make one. Cool. So I just need to find out if that recipe is LV. It is LV. Oh, okay. So I can make more gold then. It's not amazing. You know, that's a 40% shot at what is a fourth of an ingot. So it's definitely small amounts and that's really slow. But if I run one of those on a few stacks, you know, of dust, it gets me somewhere. call that good for now. I know there's a lot more we could mine, but given I don't have a huge need at the moment, I think we've got enough to get us our initial batteries and battery alloys that we're going to need. to our LV quest line, we can see here that we get um, two quests, one for antimony and one for lead. So we need to get the, what is this, Stibnite going? Wait, do I have Stibnite? Uh, I don't remember. Apparently I do. Where did that come from? The tetrahedrite vein. Okay, sweet. And I think we also get, don't we just get, uh, that's, yeah, that's what it is. We already have a, a decent amount, don't we? Of the antimony? I have 14 plus some more nuggets um, from doing the tetrahedrite in the blast furnace. That's what it was. But yeah, we'll chuck the stibnite in there. And then the galena is the, well, I guess we can just do lead or as well which smelts into 10 nuggets a piece which is both annoying and helpful because I might just rather I don't know ingots do I have an easier way to get ingots into nuggets these days or is it still just the alloy smelter probably just the alloy smelter Just for simplicity, I'll do some galena. 
And battery alloy is mostly battery alloy is what? Mostly lead. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll make another. I'll just make a whole stack here. So then the Stib Knight can just go directly in. We could process it to get a little more, but I don't have any of those things yet. I would need a thermal centrifuge or a regular centrifuge, either one. And then the chemical bath, we are pretty far from making sodium per sulfate. It's kind of a annoying thing. We need sodium bisulfate, which yeah, you kind of need salt to make. Which is... Yep, we're not dealing with that. Okay, so... Stibnite. Y'all just go in here. Make some more antimony. I shall grab all the iron that we made. A lot of that needs to be turned into rods, so I'll preemptively get going with that. Do another stack. Okay, so that's going. Now we need our Galena, which is just about done. Apparently I have quartzite. Why did I crush quartzite? That should have gone in the thingy, right? In the forge hammer? Did I need quartzite dust for something? Um, I don't remember. Alloy smelt to get... I guess I can make glass from quartzite. Maybe that's why I did it. Or I did it on accident. I have no memory of this. Or did I do it to make glass dust more efficiently? <laughs> uh, oh, that's what I did it for. I wanted molten glass because uh, we talked about the iron, iron chest, but we didn't talk about iron tanks. So iron tanks mod, weirdly enough, the upgrades are worse because they all require molten glass at every step, whereas the actual tanks themselves only require the bottom tier one every time and then a double plate and then one set of glass. So it's better to just directly make, you know, the tanks we want to make, which is probably going to be steel tanks for now, because then all we need is a double steel plate for each one. So, so we'll probably make a decent chunk of those. And these are also cheaper, you know, in the assembler, which we've already seen. Uh, but I will need some strengthened glass. Which is different than the quite clear glass. And I'll need molten glass for that. Chemical reactor, saltpeter, which we have, and tin, which we have. So, once I have a chemical reactor, I can do as much of that as I want. Okay, that should be the antimony quest complete. Ta-da! And then we'll get the lead one done. And what's this? Advanced boiler. More efficiently than with the high pressure boiler. It won't use fuel up unless it starts to run low on steam. Well, that's nice. Um, what is that? Oof, lead, steel, steel tank. Okay, produces 750 per second. Is that a lot? Do I, that's 37 per tick. 37 and a half per tick. So this is about the same as one of those high pressure railcraft ones, but probably uses less fuel. So making like eight of these might have been better than what I originally did, but we've got what we've got. 
it is running out, by the way. Um, and I definitely will route these items up here soon. I just need to get my butt in gear and do it. For now, I can just do this once in a while. Why does that happen sometimes? I'm holding shift and I double click and they all get thrown on the on the ground. I don't even know how that happens because if I double click. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know what causes that. OK, that should last a little while. Eat that shroom salad. Toss that bowl away. Oh, I can eat whatever that was, a ginger snap. And then grab our lead. Not quite enough for the quest. But I do have enough to start making some battery. Oh, I can't make battery alloy yet, though, because we want to wait for the quest, because we need 32 at the same time. And then once we have battery alloy, it's just tin cables and battery alloy plates. And then we have to make the canner. Basic canner? What's the difference between the... What's the fluid canner? Single-use batteries. Oh, and coolant cells. Okay. Oh, you most likely won't even need this. Okay, cool. Well, in that case, we'll ignore it for now. But you can make, like, single-use mercury batteries or whatever. Centrifuged out of redstone. Interesting. How do you make, uh, or how much does it make? Mercury. Again, if you guys know, let me know how to find liquids in here. Oh, that's not right. Yeah, I wanted that. Like, how would I get to this, but in this search menu? Okay, centrifuge, redstone. Oh wow, you get quite a bit. It's 30% mercury. And red so redstone is half iron, which is kind of crazy. Oh my god, that's so slow. <laughs> 170 seconds. But that actually means you can get a crap ton of iron out of redstone because we've already looked at like how much redstone gives us, you know, a redstone uh, from the nether gives us 20 uh, redstone dust or something like that. It's nuts. Okay, there we go. So I should be able to do 16 and 64 and we'll make a bunch of battery alloy in our Alloy smelter. And then I need the we'll complete that. I do not need a mixed salad. I've had many of those. Battery alloy plates. I don't think I care which one of these I grab. Anything important here? I don't think so. Maybe I should have checked if there's a better way to make battery alloy dust. No, it's the same. Same ratio. Um, and once we have polyethylene, we can save on battery alloy plates, but we do not have polyethylene. That'll have to wait. Now the canner, I can make that real quick. It does require three glass, but let's go do that. Three glass, where is my glass? Oh, it's already, no, those are glass panes. Do I have zero glass right now? It seems like that is the case. 
Um, it's the easiest way to make this. Blast dust and a block mold. I think right now that's the best way I have. I know I can do it in the tinkers thing too, but. Blast dust and a block mold, huh? Okay. Battery alloy ingots go on pause for a second. That should be enough for, what is this, 12 batteries? That'll get us started. I might not turn them all into batteries yet because I will want to make lithium where we can instead of sodium. And I don't have any lithium yet and I think sodium will be easy to get. Also, can I just say how similar battery alloy and lead look in terms of color? So many similar colors. I wish they had something to differentiate them, even if they were different directions. I don't know, maybe them being the same shape is part of the, I don't know. I can't tell if I like it or not. Part of me does, part of me hates it. <laughs> okay, I need three glass blocks, so that's gonna take a second. Now, you know what we're not doing is running steel. That That is bad. So, real quick, let me get some more coal going in the forge hammers. Make sure we can keep coke running. Because that's not running either. Yeah. We got plenty of iron, but we don't have enough coke. Uh, let's see, and then we put that in the compressor doodly-doo. And then grab this. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh yeah, this was still running that antimony stuff. Grab our steel and ashes. Put all that away for a second. And then grab all the steel. Let me go grab some more iron to put in all those. Sure those aren't running out of iron anytime soon. Okay, and now we've got our glass. And I can make the canner and make our first batteries. Need some more machine holes. There we go. Basic canning machine, baby. Quest. Oh, I need to make the battery holes first. Of course I do. Um, okay, you go there. You make the battery holes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yay! Okay, I will take a loot bag. And then we will get this, get another loot bag. Let's see what we get. Circuits? Uh, 16 aluminum gravel ore, 16 glass panes and a tank. You know, I've gotten worse rewards. You all know that we've gotten worse rewards than that. Aluminum gravel will go in here. Okay, so then to make the actual, uh, so that I can finally get a magnet. Oh, I need magnetic steel? Wait a second. Oh, you can compress. Weird. Wait a second. Oh, I'm thinking electrical steel. I'm sorry. That's a different thing. Okay, so I do need a lithium battery. So what's the way to get lithium? It's probably going to be electrolyzing. Nope, can't electrolyze anything at LV. 
So how about centrifuging? Lipidolite or sputamine? Lipidolite is in a salts vein, which I still haven't found, and so is sputamine. That's the one vein we haven't found. And guess what reward we just didn't take? It's lipidolite ore. Oh, that's funny. That's really funny. We need the salt vein. Um, yeah, and I want to say we can get a lot of lithium once we start spinning or electrolyzing stuff. I do have a soapstone one in the twilight forest. But I don't really want sodium batteries. They suck. But yeah, this is what I kind of wanted to do anyway. I should have checked if there was a quest for it. Uh, because then we'll be able to have electric versions. And they use electricity to counteract the, the durability loss. <sighs> okay, so ore finder wand plus... Can I... Can I buy a lipidolite? Where's that one that has all the different ones? I thought it was one of these, but maybe not. Hmm. Where are you? Oh, it's this one. Redstone, Appetite, Spessartine, blah, 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 blah. Nope. No Spudamine, no Lipidolite, no Salt. So to find a Salt Vein, you got to do it the hard way. So maybe I'll do that between episodes because it's just more of what we've already done a lot of in this episode. <laughs> and they spawn, where do salt veins spawn? 50 to 70. So I do need to check in areas that aren't quite at sea level. And they do show up in the Twilight Forest, but again, probably not really because of the, the height of Twilight Forest stuff. So Awesome. Okay, well, we're going to have to call it an episode there. We've got our canning machine, which is pretty great, but we're not quite going to be able to uh, use it in this episode because we don't have our lithium yet, but we'll get there. Don't you worry. We'll get there. I'm excited with our progress. We've got uh, a lot of things to do. It feels like there's just so much to do at this stage of the game. You know, you're, you almost need one of everything in terms of the machines. And there are a lot of machines. Oh my gosh. So yeah. And then I'll probably connect up the wood from down there to our uh, boiler up here and turn it back into the two by two by two version. I think this wood farm supplies enough. I haven't mathed it out exactly. Uh, let's see, but I actually, what well, could we, we could math it out real quick. So it's gonna be 1.5 consumption rate. So that's an overall consumption of 12 times the rate, which means one log, instead of lasting for 15 seconds, will last for 15 twelfths of a second, which means one log will last 1.25 seconds which means one log or one second, we'll use 0.8 logs. So to run for an hour, we're gonna need whatever 80% of 3,600 is, uh, which I'm gonna say is roughly 3,000. So I need almost a log a second, and I'm actually not sure if this will do that. So I may have to keep crafting them into planks because we can't auto craft yet. The other option is to work towards the cutting machine angle. And so let's see. So we said one per second, right? So this would be way too slow, right? Because that's only going to produce, even if it's running constantly, four planks every 20 seconds. So and I guess we could also burn the pulp, in which case that Gives us a slip, but I would need basically five of these running. Um, but if we K 
can use lubricant, then we get a lot more, and I would only need two cutting machines running with lubricant. So that's obviously the better route to go. And then they would produce, you know, six planks every 10 seconds, which is, again, almost enough. Um, but then why don't I just make an assembler and make planks? Because then all I need is a macerator and the wood pulp and some glue. Yeah, I guess it, for some reason my brain was saying that somehow this one is harder to do, but it's not. Because I make an entire stack of wood planks, which is equivalent to like five stacks of, you know, the other kind of planks which should last for about 300 seconds. So this is fast enough. And then the wood pulp in a macerator, if I make an LV macerator. Uh, let's see, we can just search for log. Apparently you can't. No, I guess it's called wood. So can I search for wood like that? No, because those are called wood planks. Really annoying. Um, Oh no, log? What are they what are they called? What are they flipping called? I don't know, we'll find it if we keep scrolling. Can I do like not arrow? Nope. You can't. I don't really know what the number sign does. Goodness. Okay, so uh, where are you? Logs. This would have been faster to, to go the other direction. Let's look at the uses for a log rather than do this. Oh my gosh. I think it's six. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Um... What is it even called? Oak? Dark oak wood. It is just called wood. Okay, anyway. Sorry about that. Uh, should have done it this way. So the macerator will make six pulp every 20 seconds. Is that fast enough? So that's about one every three. I won't get the, the extra until we're at HV. Um, so that's slightly less than one every three. We'll call it one every seven and each pulp will end up creating one plank, which is worth five, uh, slightly more than five, uh, 300 burn time units. So one LV macerator should be fast enough, actually, because it'll produce six, or it'll produce one third per second, which then will turn into five thirds of the other ones per sec. Okay, so one macerator and one assembler will be fast enough, and then I can line it up with some item pipes. So that's the plan. We'll do that uh, either partially in between episodes or uh, in the next episode. And we've got all this lead and antimony. How exciting! And yeah, we'll call that we'll call that the end. As always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next episode.